So now we are on to the second bag in the I row pack, I7 through I13. So I'm going to take my book, open it up to I7, and I can see that I wrote EPP modified, which means my diagram for laying out the pieces is going to be in the booklet inside the row pack. So here we go. And so what they've essentially done is made this middle section the entire block. So when you go to find your triangles, they're not going to be this size, they're going to be this size. So I'm going to dump out my bag. All right, so I have bunches of little pieces and some teeny, 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 tiny triangles. you got to see this. <laughs> I don't do this in advance. I do this on camera with you. So we go through this all together. There are some bitty, bitty pieces in here. So you're going to want to be really careful about where you do this. So this ought to be interesting. So I'm going to find some triangles here. And I'm going to put my bitties, my teeny bitties. Oh my gosh. And there's little squares. Wow. Okay. I gotta know something. I gotta know where those go. So we have nine, no, ten is modified, but it's simplified to just the X and the big, and I've already covered that, but that's gotta be it. And this one. Wow, sorry. Back to I7, okay. So I have triangles. This one is not big enough. I'm going to put that in that little, and these little bitties are going to go in a pile. These medium ones are going to go in a pile. These kind of stick figure ones are going to go here, little tiny squares. So this, in this case, this is kind of, this is where I start to separate stuff. When I'm digging for the first pieces of the first block is when I start to separate them. So, haha, -ha. I'm looking for eight of these triangles. So, I found one. And I always start up in the upper left because I'm right handed and it's easier so that when my hand is on here, I'm working this way. You can do it as you see fit. I just wanted you to know why I do what I do. So, I got squares, triangles, triangles. So, I'm going to dig through all this stuff and I'm going to locate. The triangles, I'm going to locate eight triangles, and I'm going to locate rectangle and big rectangle. So here's a big rectangle. Let's see if that fits. Yep. So I'm going to go through here, and I'm going to dig out these pieces. As I go through these, I'm noticing that some of these pieces, I live in a humid state. I live in South Carolina, so in the summer it can get real humid, and so paper can accumulate some of that humidity and this has a bow to it like this top part is going up and this part's going down this is a minor point but what I do is I make sure that the bow goes up because it stays on the paper the edges are touching that way it stays on the paper better and that way it doesn't like dance around when you're dealing with it so just a little tip so as I come upon things is when I decide to point them out I've come across a triangle that's slightly larger so you want to make sure that you don't end up accidentally using those. So I've already found two of those for a different block. So I'm still working on finding the other four of my triangles. So I found all of my I7 pieces. And I found them all of the triangles before I had finished the pile. So I went through and eyeballed some of the other triangles that may have been close, just in case. Because if you find a block right away, and there happens to be triangles that are really close, you may have blocks, you may have triangles from another block without knowing it. So you just want to verify that you really did get the right pieces, especially this one's got so many teeny, teeny, tiny pieces over here. Anyway, so I'm going to I7 all of these and then put my red dot on my focus fabric. This is a modified block, so I want to make sure that when I look for my focus fabric that I'm looking inside this one section. 
that got expanded. So that means that these cross pieces, one, two, and three, are focus fabric, and then these are background, and then the outside triangles are focus fabric. So I'll do that, and then I will check my fabric for direction. I do not have a directional fabric for this particular block, so I won't have to worry about arrows. I'm going to bag this up and move on to my next one. Okay, so the next block I need to find all the pieces for is I-8, and I-8 has some distinctive pieces in here. We've got these pieces with flat edges and um, one slanted side. So I have a bunch of those over here and there's different lengths. So I will make sure that I find these all and lay them out. I want to be very careful of my triangles because I have different sizes. I have a smaller one here, a bigger one, medium one. So I want to make sure I verify my triangles. Well here's a triangle and that fits on that one, but it does not fit. Let me do it here. So this one fits here, but it does not fit here, but barely. So what's going to happen here is I'm going to have to label which triangles are what. So I will probably number which triangles, like this is layer one, because this is going to be, I'm going to make this from the inside out. So this is layer, this is square, and then layer one, two, three, and then out side, or whatever, however I'm going to do this, but you want to, that's, I've already know that that's going to be an issue, because this is, you know, like an eighth of an inch off, if that, maybe a sixteenth. So, that's going to be interesting. So as I go through here, I'm going to be very careful. And then now that I have a triangle that I know is this one, I can take other triangles and check to see if they match up. Like I have this similar size here, which I can tell you this is too big. So that one goes here. I need my, need my stiletto for this. So this is not sitting right. Okay, so that one goes there and then I think these might be the same size, but you want to verify against this other triangle. So, yep, that's correct. So as I go around here, I'm going to make sure that I've got the right things. And if I come across any that are very close, I want to check them with my other paper pieces. Because you can look at these here, like, okay, perfect example, this one. This one I've already verified that fits here and it matches that one, but this one is very close and it's not the same size as this one. So that is either in a different spot of this block or in a different block. So this is going to be set aside and this one fits here and I can verify that with that paper piece I think. And then you want to be very picky when it comes to your triangles matching with the other triangles. You want to be very, very picky. All right, so I've got those. And so I'm going to go back to my triangle piles and see what I can find. And we dive deeper into the triangle drama. So I've confirmed that this triangle fits in this piece. So I'm going to set this aside, but that's for these. I've confirmed that this triangle fits for these pieces. So if I scoot this aside and look at the actual black line. Okay, so that's for the inside ones. This one, I was trying to figure out where it belongs. So I placed it alongside this one right at the point, and it's a little too big. So then I figured maybe it's one of these and I placed it here, and it's a little too small. So it doesn't belong on these blocks. And that's why you have to be picky. Now, if we get to a point where there's not four to fit this, then I'm gonna come back to this. But for now, I'm gonna set this aside in its own little pile so I know that it's an issue for this particular thing. So 
Yep, and then here's another one that's the same size as that one. And then we go to the next one. Now this one's significantly bigger, which means it's probably one of these. So let's test that out. And sure enough, that one matches exactly. So that's going to be one of these on the inside section. So I'm going to place that with my stiletto. And then keep rolling along here. So stick that in there. Oops, this one slid. And I want to be exacting so I make sure that my middle comes together correctly. I haven't found my square yet, primarily because I haven't looked for the middle square. So that one is exact. So that's going to be one of these on the outside. So I've got all four of my triangles for level two. Because that one was the one that I originally used. I'm going to hold this down so I can scoot this off of there. It's easiest to scoot these with the stiletto when they're not on top of another piece of paper because you'll take the other piece of paper with you. So now my chore is to find two more of these since I still have one here and to find these, which I have a smaller triangle pile, which they may be in the smaller triangle pile, and I need an edge to measure. And let's see if this is the right size. And no. <laughs> I'm going to move this because I need an edge to measure to confirm that these are the right size. So this goes here, and this is this one. But do you see how it's ever so slightly short? I don't know if you can see that. Let me flip it around. And so if I put that on, if I put that here, you can see that there's a small, small space. I'm going to assume that this is not the right triangle, but it could be if the square is too big. But because these fit exactly, I'm assuming that this is gonna fit exactly here too. But again, I will set that aside in case that happens to be the ones I'm looking for. And then this one is smaller yet. So on goes the slog to find more triangles. So I'm going to keep those two here while I find the square, and I have si square sizes. That's too small. This one seems to be exact. No, it's too small. Okay, so let's see if I got lucky on number two. <clears throat> so I'm going to hold, I'm going to hold that so it doesn't scoot. And that seems to fit snugly right in there. So now this is the moment of truth is where I want to put all my triangles in here very carefully because I want to make sure that this triangle line lines up exactly point to point with this square because that is how you really confirm that you've got the right thing. Because like I said, there is a couple squares there is a couple blocks where they don't line up with the book, but they line up with the triangles. So essentially, you have to line up with the paper pieces because that's what you're making. And if it doesn't line up with paper pieces, then you're not going to have a result that's, that's any good. Now I still have to find two more of these guys. That's why I keep these in piles of similar sizes because if I mess up and I miss out, then I only have to go through... A specific pile that looks similar rather than a bunch of other piles. So there's all my triangles and then I'm going to find all of my angled pieces. So I got all my I8 pieces found and I'm going to label them for my focus fabric and that means I have these triangles that are around my square and then I have these that are pointing in the same direction Four, and then these that are connecting the two, two, three, 
four, and I'm going to verify that. So I have these outside ones, these big ones, and these ones around the square. All right. So what I'm going to do here is I'm going to put a mark of some kind. So I'm actually going to put a one on these four pieces. One, one, and then I'm going to write the number one on my book once I go to move it, but I need to check for direction and my fabric for this block is very, very directional because it's a stripe. So I'm going to have to label that. So I'm going to have to put arrows. All right, so I put arrows on my pieces for my focus fabric because I have a very heavy stripe for my focus fabric. That way at least I know which way the, the triangles are oriented when they are in their final position for the block. My other issue is that I have these triangle size problems. So I'm going to mark these with the two, even though they're background fabric, I'm still going to mark them with a two because then I can mark them in my book. And then I'm going to mark these with the three. I don't have to, but I'm gonna. And then this is the one I have to as well. This is, I have to mark these. So these are going to be number four. And that's because of the layers. I'm going to make this block from the inside out. So those are my layers. So I want to make sure that I've got everything labeled before I move anything. And it seems that I do. So then I'm going to move this a couple at a time and I'm going to put a four here and I'm going to put a three here and a four here. So I know where these numbers correspond to. Otherwise you don't, you know, you're like, well, what was my key again? So, okay, I got a four here and a two here. So I'm going to finish this up and then I'm going to bag it. And that's what my book looks like once I've bagged my pieces and I'm going to move on to my next block. So the next block is I-9 and it's an EPP modified block so I'm going to refer to my booklet and I'm liking the booklet better than the book. I wouldn't have a clue really how to ex successfully execute this so they fixed that and simplified the center. So I'm going to go through my triangle drama again and make sure that all of these triangles are the right size for their pieces. And I'm hoping that most of them are the exact same size. So these are the same size as these. So these are all the same size. These are bigger, these are smaller. And so I'll get to putting my pieces on my block. Okay, so I've started finding my triangles for the outside corner and I know I have to find some more, but I wanted to find my middle square and I found something interesting before I found my middle square. This particular size, there's multiple ones of these, is a little bit short of the black lines. Then there's this size, which is a little bit large of the black lines. And then I came upon this guy that seems to be exactly in the black lines. So there's some very, very close things. Then I'm going to go through and find the triangles that surround the center square so that I confirm that it really is the right square for the center of this block. So I'm going to take this triangle, which I'm pretty sure is the right size, and get it so that it's exactly next to this square so that I can see how the points go. And of course, this is short. So I'm going to have to go through these and find triangles and things that line up correctly. Because to be honest, I'm kind of confused as to why this doesn't line up. So I found the right triangle, but slightly bigger than the one I was trying to do a minute ago. So this is why you want to confirm it with your paper pieces, because it's that close. So this is the correct size triangle that goes from point to point on the square. 
And just to show you just how close these are, I have, this is my correct triangle, and this is my one that was slightly too small, and this is how close they are. I'm going to line them up on the bottom, and they're just ever, ever too much. So this is, this is so much fun. So, I have three more triangles to find that match this square side. So I did manage to find four triangles that match exactly up to this square. So I'm going to move on to the rest of my triangles. So I'm continuing to find the triangles. All of these, there's these four, these four, and then you've got one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Those are all the same size. So what I've done is I've set one aside and I'm checking every single triangle to make sure it fits exactly as I place it. So that way I know that I have the right triangles because you've seen how close some of these are. And if you happen to have a set for the next block or so that are close, you wouldn't know it until you went to the next block and then you found that you didn't have the right size or the right numbers available. So I'm just going through here and checking them as I go. So I found all of my medium sized triangles, all 16 of them. So I've set these four aside because they go here. I'm going to put my other triangles in there before I put the other two next to them. But I've been trying to find the triangle that matches this. And I think I found this one right here. But I also have triangles that are very close to that one. So this one is slightly bigger, but it's very, very close. So again, I'm going to check my triangles. And that little bit on the top there is just too much, and that's not going to be the right one. And as I've said before, if you don't get it exactly right during this piece, once you start assembling this stuff, a little bit, a 32nd of an inch over an entire block adds up pretty fast. So I'm going to find the four triangles for this and finish laying this out. So I've got all my I-9 triangles labeled and put in place. Now I just have to label the ones that have my focus fabric on them. So I have the center and then not these but these triangles no that's not right let's work from the other way here this is an adapted block so these right here are definitely focus fabric and these triangles are definitely focus fabric which means then in order to keep the integrity of the design that would be that this is not focus fabric and this is not focus fabric and this is so I'm going to mark these little ones and then I'm going to take my ink pen I'm going to cross these out because then I know that those were my mistakes. And then when it comes down to these on the outside, this has a border that's been eliminated. So that let's do this. Let's put these as background so it sets that off. And then I will do this one as focus fabric and this one as focus fabric. And that's what I'm going to do. That way I'm going to have an integrity of design. So I'm going to have these fanning. So I got this one, this one, and this one, which means that's background. And then this one, this one, and this one. And the reason that works out that way is because they took out a square in the middle here. And that's what I was seeing. So this square was eliminated. So I'm going to commit to that. And then I have to check my directional. So my fabric is directional. It has a background stripe that I have ignored in the past and I regretted it. So this is definitely 180 directional or 90 degrees or whatever, but it's got a direction. So I need to make sure that I label my focus fabric pieces with an arrow so that I can get them 
all lined up correctly. Once I'm done with my arrows, I'm going to bag this up and move on to the next block. So the next block is I-10 and it's also EPP modified, so I'm going to go refer back to my I-Row booklet so that I can work from that. So this is the modified block that's going to be appliqued. And it has the last four and a half inch square assigned to it. So this is the I-10, four and a half inch square. I'm gonna set it down here so I can put it in my bag. And then it has a center square and four of these weird triangles. And I already have those set aside. And those are here. Maybe. Okay, those are here. And then I've got a center square and outside square. So this is for an outside square, but the center square is smaller. So I'm going to have four of these squares that are the same size. So I think these are these. One, two, three, and four. And when I check, when I check my square size, I'm always checking at the same one and I set those aside so that I know that it's not changing. I'm always checking it to the same square. And then I have a center square that I have to find. So I will put these in place and then I will label them for th I-10. So I've got my I-10 pieces placed where they go and I'm going to mark all of them except the center square Whoops. <laughs> I'm going to mark all of them with except the center square with a red dot. And then I'm going to check my fabric for direction. So I found my I-10 fabric and it is directional, but I'm going to fussy cut this. So I'm not going to worry about labeling my arrows on my pieces. So I'm just going to bag this up with the fabric and move on to the next block. So I'm on to I-11 and I have four of these squares with cut out corners. So clearly those are what's going to be here. And I have four diamonds that I'm going to, there, there's the only the four diamonds in the entire bag. And so the trick here is going to be able to find these four triangles. So I will set off to do that. So I have found the four triangles that have the only chance of coming close to fitting at this point, but after I have said over and over again that a little off is a problem, this is a little off and it's okay. <laughs> Let me explain. You want to verify that this triangle is going to fit this corner. So I have Line these up exactly, and this triangle completes this square, which means it's the right triangle, even though it doesn't fit to the drawing. And the reason is, is because this piece overlaps the drawing. So in the end, at the end, this is another example of how you want to make sure that it lines up with the other paper pieces around it and then you will commit to having these be your center triangles for your I-11 block. And the other reason is, is because there's no other triangle that's come close to the, the right size. All the other triangles I have are these teeny tiny minuscule things. So that's not even close to the right size. And so I will put these in place with my, with my giant corners, label them, and then label my diamonds and I'm going to put red dots on my giant corners only. So I've got my pieces for my I-11 block labeled and my focus fabric pieces marked and so I'm going to check directional and I have a striped fabric and now if you look on the outside of these pieces you can see that Jane did horizontal here and horizontal in the opposite corner and then vertical here and vertical there. So that's what I'm going to do because it makes life a lot easier because if I have if I have vertical to vertical here, I'm going to want them to line up to the pattern. So this way, if I do it this way, I don't have to worry about that. I'm going to have this one 
be vertical and this one be vertical and these two be horizontal. So I've got my arrows down and I'm going to now bag my block. All right, so now I'm on number 12. And the nice thing about getting down to the end here is that it's either this block or the other block. So I have a big old square that goes in the middle of this. And then I have, this is my block 13. So I have all these little tiny triangles and I have eight groups of four that for the tiny triangles. So I took all my tiny triangles and I'm just going to dump them out because they're clearly for this block. So I'm going to place these as I go, but I'm also going to make sure that I have the right squares which go in the corners. And so I have four of these. I have some little squares available too, but those are smaller and I have I should have four of those somewhere. And then I have triangles. Now the triangles, there are some similar triangles for the I-13. So I'll make sure that I get the right ones for here. So I've got all my teeny tiny triangles and I've got my four squares. Now I have to find my triangles for the outside of this square and you would think that that would be easy. Of course not. So um, I have this triangle that I have found to be an exact match on this edge of this square. But there are four other triangles for the I-13 block that are extremely close in size. So much so that this one is the right one for this block and this one is the right one for the I-13 block. And they are separated by, I don't know if you can even see that, but it's like a 64th of an inch or something. So if I put them point to point, that's how much they're separated. So the smaller, the very slightly smaller of the two is the one for the I-13 block. And the other one is for the I-12 block. So now that I've found the four that I need for I-12, I'm going to finish laying out my I-12 block. So at last I have found all of my pieces and laid them out in my I-12 block. When I go to label my focus fabric, I have to take into consideration that this band of white is actually the sashing and quartering stones of Jane's quilt. So this big giant white square would be the center. So the larger triangles surrounding the center are going to be focus fabrics. So I will mark them as such. And the squares also will be focus fabrics. And then it's just a matter of the teeny tiny triangles in which the center of the four are focus fabrics. Now, when I check my directional on my fabric, I see that I have another stripe. This was because I did not pick it. So, I have all four squares, all four large triangles, and then one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight of the teeny tiny center triangles marked for focus fabric. And now I need to mark it for directional. So I've marked them directional. And I did it with a ballpoint pen, and this is why I started using ballpoint pen, is because right here, I had to do it over the Sharpie. So if I did it with Sharpie, I wouldn't know whether or not it was an arrow or a screwed up eye. So I want to make sure that I got all my pieces with my directional arrows on them. And sure enough, it looks like, oh, nope, I missed one. This is why I double check all four of those. And my stripe is actually quite large, so I may not have to worry about a directional situation with these little teeny tiny triangles because this is my large stripe. So the triangles, the tiny triangles, will be in the flower section. So I'm going to bag this up and get on to the final block. I'm on my final block of this row. So the I-13 block has also been modified. So I'm going to go into my book here. And so I have two size triangles left, larger and smaller. I should have four, five squares, 
four larger ones and one small one. I should have four rectangular pieces and four pieces with opposing angles on either end. So I will make sure that I've got the right triangles in the right spot is pretty much the only difficulty here, which I wouldn't really classify as a difficulty. And I will lay out my pieces and get these marked up. All right, so now I have to label my focus fabrics. And since it's modified, it's changed up a little bit from this. I'm gonna point with this because last time I drew on my picture. So the center square is background and that's still here. And then this is focus fabric, but in the picture here, it ends in white, but this is all one piece. So I'm gonna leave all of this focus fabric. So essentially it's gonna be um, a closed in cross type shape and then I'm going to put the squares as focus fabric as well. So each one of these squares is going to be focus fabric plus these cross pieces one two three four five six seven and eight and the rest of this is going to be background and I'm going to bag this up after I check for directional and in this case I do not have a directional fabric this is my fabric, so I'm going to bag this up, and this is going to be the official end of a very difficult bag sort. <laughs>